Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So today is Sunday newspapers or Sunday papers. New, I don't know, something like that. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Newspapers. I don't know. Is that, that sounds like quite a good little. <laughs> Maybe not. <sighs> so I hope you're well. Let's have a look. Did I say my name? Say my name. Say my name. Do 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 do. What country should I look at? What country? I might go to, okay, that's annoying, it only allows me Austria, India, Sweden, France, Ireland, or the island of Ireland, as it's now sometimes referred to, Switzerland, Germany, South Africa, and United Kingdom. Why is that strange? Why is there no American newspapers? They used to be. I've got global newspapers, so maybe that'll be the one. Right. That is a little bit rubbish, actually. I must be. Maybe I've uh, accidentally limited myself. International newspapers. Uh, international newspapers. Millennium Post. Free Press. This is a bit rubbish. They seem to have reduced the amount. I'm using Readly. Readly as an app. But they seem to have reduced the amount of newspapers available, which I find a bit strange. So let's go for national newspapers. Oh, so what have we got? One, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So that's not too bad. So there's eight newspapers to choose from. Sunday People, The Sunday Mirror, Sunday Express, The Daily Star on Sunday, The Sunday Mail, Wales on Sunday, The Observer and The Independent. Oh, no sun. Okay. So, hmm. so let's have a look. Should we start, start at the top? Right, we'll start with the independent. Hello. No, actually, let's start with the tabloids first and then just... I suppose, is the independent a tabloid? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. Sunday people. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Oh, just had me breakfast. This is one of those early recordings. Um, don't tell anyone, but I'm recording this a day late. Shh. So I'm reading yesterday's newspapers. Don't tell anyone. I'm pretending it's Sunday. Okay, so this is November the 24th, 2024, but it's not really, it's the 25th. Shh, don't tell anyone. £2.60. 
So it cost me two pounds sixty for this just one newspaper. And I think the app is like twelve ninety nine for the month. So it's two, four, six, eight. So just the newspapers I'm gonna go through today would be more cost more than the month's app. Crazy, isn't it? So uh, Wow, look at this. Get your Sunday people for one pound a week for six months. Oh, do you, ever, do you ever go into a news agents? I don't know if you have news agents where you live, but and see a newspaper and say, like big, and on the front is a big thing saying, 50 pence off. You know, it's all like, get just only 25 pence a day. And you go go to the cash, cash person to pay, and they say, oh, it's £1.90, please. Like, but it says 25 pence but then you look and it's actually you can get it for 25 pence if you collect a thousand vouchers from the newspaper or something so in 10 years time you get it for 25 pence but you have to be under the age of 12 to get it or something you know it's like whoa a little bit embarrassing and they I think they do that on purpose because I can't be the only one surely not so they're going a little bit Christmassy now that we've got literally I mean it's it's one month or one day it's really just one month it's 25th but it's the November 24th today so it's near tomorrow's Monday not today, which is Sunday. <laughs> um, exactly a month till Xmas. So they've been talking quite a bit in the newspapers about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Now, I don't know if everybody who listens to this recording know about the I'm a celebrity you may have your own version in your country I don't know but it's a very very popular show in the UK very popular it's I would argue these days and I'm, I don't know because I'm not I don't watch much television but I would guess it's a guess that the two most popular programs or TV series during the year would probably be I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here and Strictly Come Dancing. That's based on the amount of press attention those two shows get. Possibly Celebrity Big Brother as well. That's always of interest. But, you know, to the, pre to the press because you've got famous people Giving away secrets. <gasps> I think Celebrity Big Brother's on again in January, I think, so I'm looking forward to that. I think I actually prefer the uh, Celebrity version now over the normal version. Because the last series of Big Brother, which finished a couple of weeks ago, I, I didn't really warm to anybody in there there was no one in there that I found just I mean I didn't didn't dislike all of them <laughs> I struggled a little bit with the uh, the communication well my me understanding some of the communication because they was there was what one two one two three four five there's at least five people 
using kind of street language or I don't know if it's street language, young young language or whatever, which I didn't really get. Using phrases that I didn't understand. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm now officially old. Thank you very much, big brother. But I never really... I think what it is, is if you get, if you put, if you'd put one of those people that were talking like that in with the house that was predominantly people that were just talking normally, just normal English kind of chat, you know, just not without all the, the different phrases and um, unusual kind of up to date up to date language I guess up to date uh, usage of words and stuff then that person normally adapts to the house they're in they adapt to it around the people they're in it's kind of like if you've got two two Jamaican English people if you've got, you've got one and they will they'll you know they won't they'll just talk normally I like this you know, I say normally but just like kind of random sort of norm. I don't want to use the word normal what I'm trying to say is I've known one of my best friends was kind of Jamaican English so his family I think his parents were Jamaican always just it was a Londoner just spoke just like a Londoner but when another friend of his was there who was also like Jamaican English they start speaking like patois or whatever it is and I didn't understand a word I understand a few words and they couldn't they couldn't do that with me because I well I suppose they could do it with me because I, I would have just like nodded my head I did have a Russian bloke that worked that I worked with and he felt so comfortable with me that one day he started speaking Russian. And I just nodded. And then he realised he was doing it. He said, oh, sorry. I said, don't worry. So he must have felt really comfortable with me. I'll tell you what I did the other day. I clicked it. Uh, it was like a delivery. I had a delivery. And a bloke's name... I went out the front to collect it. And I thought, I'm going to try and use the man's name. Try and try and pronounce his name. And it was Adbul Ajala or Adbul Alabalala or something like that. It was quite a long name. So I thought, I'm going to attempt it. So I did. And you know what? I said, hi, Abalala. And, and he sort of said, I, I said, did I say your name right? He said, no. But you know what? It was so friendly after that. Because at least I attempted it. At least I kind of met him on the same level. I don't know on the same level, but I kind of I gave it a go. Because I don't know if someone from another country, let's say from some of the Uber delivery drivers and stuff, they might struggle with my name. They're like, you know they might they struggle with that so it's a different language but I'm, I'm I'm not very good at English never mind any other language but he was honestly he was saying oh thank you my brother and he was like really friendly to me and they're usually friendly because I'm always friendly to delivery drivers because I don't want them to spit in my food but it's just it's there is something I felt like I'd grown as a person just in that second, and I don't mean I don't mean I was aroused. I mean I kind of I felt like oh, it felt quite nice, quite nice. Because you know I'm I like to be friendly to people, especially especially people delivering stuff. Because I get a lot of stuff delivered because I don't really go out much, but I like to make the effort. I'd always leave a tip. 
on on the on the app. No, I know some I know some people are like, oh, you live in tip, they get paid to do the job. Like, that's not really the point. For me, it's like, well, just seems I don't leave a big tip. You know, ten pence, but it's still a tip. I remember I got a taxi from Stratford to Romford about 1994 and it was a bank holiday and for some reason it was really busy all the motorways blocked up and it took us Stratford to Romford is not a long it was Harold Wood it's not a long journey seriously it's not a long journey it took us about an hour to get there and uh we were stuck in traffic for ages. There was no public transport. Something like there was, I don't know, it was something, I think there was like a train strike or something going on in London. Just normal, normal weekend. And he, it might be in a bank holiday Monday in August, which is a fairly busy time. And when we got to where we were going, he said, don't I get a tip? I said, yeah, don't, don't, don't work on a bank holiday Monday when there's no transport. And he didn't find it funny. And I said, well, I didn't have any money to give him a tip. I might have given him a pound. He's a pound. But I figured like my company for an hour was the best tip he could have had. From either from either way you go, like if you look at it from a direction of he had a great time spending time with me and it was a really nice experience, or it was so awful that he decided to get himself a a different job, which might have improved his life. Who knows? You know, it could go, or you know, it could have you know could have been a positive either side. See, I know what it's like to to be. I didn't know what it was like to be a foreigner. We're all foreigners, aren't we? But I've, whenever I've been a foreigner in another country, I've always struggled. And apart from France, every country I've been to, and it's not. I've not been to a lot of countries. It's just I'm so ancient. It's just over the years I have been to a few. Every every time I've ever sort of tried to communicate with somebody that speaks another language when I've been abroad, they've always been great. They're so understanding and kind. I said, apart from France. Um, but that, I just had a bad experience in France, so I, I needed the toilet that can often lead to a bad experience. All I was doing was asking people, this is in Paris, so I was asking people, can you tell me the bogs are? I need, I need a poo. And they, they were like just, it wasn't like, they, no one was saying, oh, I don't speak English, they were just blanking me. Like looking at me and then just looking away and carrying on walking. And I struggled with that because I could never do that to someone. I mean, in London, you don't look at people. That's kind of the understood thing. And if someone's begging, this is bad, but if someone's begging or whatever, you kind of just ignore them. It's not because you don't care. It's not It's not because if you see the same person, if, if every... So if you're in London, right, okay... And every time you turn a corner, there's someone asking for money. I mean, literally, you could walk to work, half an hour walk, and see eight, nine people all asking for money. And you can't give money to everyone. It's like, well, some people could, but it's kind of... I never had any money when I was in London. I was always on very low pay. So what I would try and do is give them something to eat. So what if um, 
sort of what I'd technically I would I'd wait and give on the way home so if I had some food left from my packed lunch I'd give it to them but you know the amount of people are so fussy like they'd be going haven't you got haven't you got a sandwich that's not half eaten like no, that's why I'm giving it to you because I didn't like it. So, yeah, I remember I gave um, I bought some sausage rolls. This is in the town that I live now. I bought some sausage rolls, and there was a uh, a woman. Yeah, it was a woman who was, I think she was selling the big issue, and she was cold. It was freezing cold outside, and I thought I'll just do something nice. I'll buy a buy a sausage roll as you do and I think I got a pack of four so three <laughs> three and a half for me and a half of one for her with bite marks in it and I didn't I gave her a whole one I might, I might have given her two I might have, I might have planned to give her two but when I got to her you know what she said I'm not going to do the accent, don't worry. I don't like sausage rolls. And she says, I don't don't like sausage rolls. I said, okay. I mean, okay. I mean, she asked me if I could get her some food. I said, I'm hungry. So I, I went and got her something. I didn't ask her what she wanted. After that, I did ask her and I got her stuff she wanted. But, like you don't want a sausage roll and then I'm thinking just because someone's hungry doesn't mean they've got to eat stuff they don't like because there's things that I wouldn't eat even if I was well I don't know I mean I've been hungry but I've never quite been in that situation I did once go five days living on a packet of cream crackers and a jar no two packers of cream crackers a jar of jam and some tea bags and the issue with the tea bags is you need it takes a lot of water to wash that stuff down it's very bitty <laughs> but I did I had didn't even have any margarine or butter so and that, and that lasted me for five days or well, it didn't because I was hungry that was in 2002, in December, I think, roughly. No, 2001. Yeah, 2001, because I'd not been paid yet. So I was waiting for my first month's wages, but proper month's wages with uh, bonus, which was, I think it came to about £1,000. Very small bonus at the time. It's weird because I, I got, I went from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I got paid, so I got up, went to McDonald's, had something to eat, then I went to London, so I get on the train, I, I went to buy a ticket, and they said, this is how dumb I sometimes am, they said to me, well, if you go now it's going to cost you £47 but if you wait for another hour it's going to cost you 26 because it was I was basically going through peak time which is a lot more expensive I've given it as an example it might not be correct amounts of money but it was a lot more and I said no so I'll go now just because suddenly I had money I wouldn't have done that in any other situation. I would never. If if that had been a week earlier, I'd have said, oh, I'll wait an hour. I'll go and get a coffee. Sausage roll. Do you want a sausage roll? And they said, no, I don't like sausage rolls. No one likes sausage rolls but me. Which is weird, because Greg seems to be quite popular. And it was from Greg's, the sausage roll. Because they do make nice sausage rolls. It's hard to ignore that one. Of course, I mean, she might have been a vegetarian, but she wasn't. 
this woman as uh, the big brother. She had, um, I remember I gave her money at Christmas once, this years and years ago, I gave her £10, like as a Christmas, because I used to see her every week, and I'd buy her a coffee or stuff, and not just her, maybe some of the others, and suddenly about five other people who she said were all her sisters appeared it was like a magic trick I swear one of them actually like jumped out of her nose it was just it was really weird it's like suddenly all these just sisters of hers that were also selling a big issue what about me what about me what about me what about me like, well I've just given you you can share it share what you've got and she said no <laughs> you told me you said they were your sisters no they're not so okay like okay so so 10 pound would have ended up being about 100 pound how did I get onto this subject oh yeah big brother So it's it's weird because I lived in London for 12 years and I was around people that were speaking the local jibber-jabber and I never had an issue. I never, never had no problem with it. Never had a problem with communication with any of the young people because I was young myself. But I never, you know... It's only when I kind of got to about 20, you know, 31... And I was working with this young bloke. And he, he was speaking a completely different... Um, not language, but like using different phrases. Like it made it up. And he was trying to teach this girl who he was, I guess, trying to chat up or whatever. Trying to teach her how to speak it. And it was stuff like, oh, it's... It, what was it? Some of the phrases... It's just a minor, so like it's no big dish, no big deal. It's just a minor. Uh, what's the other one? Fam for family. Um, what's the other one? It's all gravy. That was another one. It's all gravy. I mean, I don't know. It's something to do with Christmas dinner, I think. And there's all these different issues that she it was breaking it down, teaching it to her. Which just shows you that it's not. If you can teach someone a certain way of talking, then it's not a real way, is it? It's made up. Because I'd struggle to teach someone how I talk. Because this is just how I've learnt the language just through this. I've never actually learnt it like, okay, now you have to say this when you say this. and I'm just jealous. I want to be able to talk like that. And I don't know how to. And one of the women that, that that was in Big Brother, she said something like, uh, uh, speak with your chest. Say it, no, say it with chest. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Say it with chest. Because that's almost like, say it with pride or say it with and then another one was saying kept going on about slay that's so slay or that wasn't slay this is slay that's slay or that's so not slay and she was using that phrase all like constantly which was really 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 irritating so slay so now I've been around people like that in the past and they keep using the same phrase and it is a little bit it can kind of creep in and I find myself saying the same thing and there's this there's a one it was a woman I met once and she just said oh don't worry it's just my period and she just kept saying it 
like it was quite funny but she just kept saying it's like oh it must be my period I don't know why she said it but she said and I noticed that uh, when I was at Butlins and I heard her say it so many times and I moved when I came back to London I realised that it crept into my own speech patterns without knowing the looks I got I mean, the only time really I ever used to oh yeah when I was in I lived in Ireland some of the speech patterns there affected my speech but it's hard not to when you're the only English person that you see for five weeks or six, seven weeks and you're around people you know with Irish I mean they all speak in English there's Irish but speak in English but there's a certain kind of different phrasing and words a different way around and that all the sentences in a different order sometimes and I I started speaking like that a little bit. But it was okay when I when I got back I re educated myself. <laughs> oh kidding. I am part Irish myself. I've got Irish heredit Irish hereditary hereditary DNA, whatever. Because my nanny was Irish. Hmm. I don't know what my granddad was. Just English, I think. I should look at the papers, shouldn't I? They keep going on about sausage rolls. We don't know why. Um, it, we, it, it, what have sausage rolls got to do with the papers? Have you if you've got shares in Greg's or something? You're making money. Is this your new way of making money now? Is it? Hey, hey, hey. So, Euston Rail Station was evacuated yesterday while police blew up a suspicious package. One passenger said online, just heard a massive explosion. Okay, that was an interesting story. Um, 4.7 million. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, what's this? GB News in £100,000 fix on Woke Lose. What? GB News blew £100,000 converting the Woke gender neutral toilets at a studio into separate male and female facilities. Okay. See, I'm not so much into unisex toilets. And, you know, there's a big thing like women, they don't want men in their space. Trust me, men do not want women in their space either. It's very hard to relax. And I'm not, I can't talk for all men, obviously. But I can talk for quite a few. It's very, it's very hard. I find it hard to really enjoy myself in a in a toilet anyway if there's other people around when I say enjoy myself I mean relax let everything flow just enjoy the experience of the you know just like you would do in your own toilet on your own toilet at home I'm not going to say in your own bathroom because although it might toilet might be in the bathroom we don't say bathroom here like, can you tell me where the bathroom is? No. Yeah. It's at home. You know, if you ask for where the bathroom is in a restaurant here, they're, they're like, what are you talking about? Do you mean the toilet? So if you do come from another country, ask where the sh <laughs> ask where the bog is. If you say, look, I need to do a poo. Can you tell me where I can do a poo, please? That's the way to ask in this country, especially if you go somewhere like the Ritz. You could just say, where's a shitter? Because it's like, you just ask, where's a poo? I need to do a poo. I need to do a poo. And the best way is, you need to shout it out really loudly. Don't get up, just stay in your seat and just shout out. 
Excuse me, I need a poo. I need a big, big poo. And they'll come and help you out. And they're really good. But that's the way to do it in this country. Just in case you're a visitor, you're planning to come here on holiday. And yeah, it's a certain etiquette. Every country's got its own etiquette. That's the etiquette here. The higher, higher place, the higher kind of, I say higher, the more expensive the restaurant is, the louder you need to shout. It's one of those things. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I, d- I don't. The only toilets that I like, I'm, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of any public toilets. Not really. No, not really. But if I was to choose my favourite public toilet or my favourite type of toilet, it would be one that's on its own. You know, when you can go in, lock the door, there's enough room to manoeuvre and there's no one else there. Ideally, I mean, the disabled toilets are really good. So I, I, I know, suppose, I mean, I am disabled, just not physically. So, you know, I wouldn't use a disabled toilet unless I thought I'd get away with it. When I have, I got I've had a few little instances in the past when I've used a disabled toilet, and I've had a little bit of an argument. Um, with a person there was a person a disabled person had like an argument they shouted at me so I was I was using it and they shouted like oi I'm in here get off me so it's yeah it was I don't take a long time but at the same time, you don't want to rush it, do you? Especially if it's, you know, for me often it's the highlight of my day. So I don't want to rush it. But I prefer to do it in my own toilet anyway. I, mean, I was at a neighbour's house yesterday and I could really... I mean, it was peaking. The waters broke, everything, I was ready to go, you know. And uh had my bag packed. And I was going to come home because I, f- I thought, no, I don't want to use your toilet. She said, why not? I said, you just, just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just don't feel comfortable. I want to, I can't enjoy it myself when I'm in someone else's toilet. And she looked at me very quizzing me, quizzing me, very like, huh? What do you mean enjoy yourself? I said, they just don't understand. It's a, uh, I don't mean enjoy myself, but relax and being a bit of a stress head sometimes. I take any time I can get to just relax and let go is a good time for me, and it can yeah it can be quite a nice time. Again, that didn't that didn't remove her quizzical expression. And just as I'm about to leave, I get a phone call. And it's really weird. Something happened. My buttocks, not just my buttocks, but the whole area, tightened up. And I realised it was a false labour. False alert. Because I was on the phone for about half hour. And I didn't need to go to the toilet once, all the way through that. And as soon as I got off the phone... My water's broke again, and I was ready to be, you know, like, quickly, going to give birth, got to go. Got it, I went to labour, it was weird. Uh, what's the next thing? Ice work for some new skating stars living the high life. I can't even read about stuff like that. Okay, news and features, this is like a celebrity thing. Tempest Flair and campers Alan Haskell 
and Dean McCulloch are bickering over a jungle chore. I can't, I don't care. Um, as Danny, Ch no, that's another one. Owned, owned and run. Right. This is just stuff about the jungle. So don't, why are they not talking about um, Makosi? That's what I don't understand. Why are they not talking? I've not watched it. I, w I watched the very first episode. But I, just knowing what they're kind of like, often the jungle's like, why are they not focusing a bit on her? Unless, unless she's just not doing much in there. So I thought it, uh, she was one of the people that I was interested in watching. It's because I fancy her. Sorry, I do. Oh, look at this. What's this about David Jason? S Sir David. No, David. We don't, let's not do sirs. Come on. David Jason is planning a family Christmas which will include his long lost daughter as they continue a voyage of discovery. I don't really know what, what that's about. Okay. Uh, why why are they talking about that? So, David said, he, I'd haunt BBC over an AI Dell. What? David is, they keep using the word sir. David is fervently opposed to an AI, AI version of Only Fools and Horses when he's gone. He spoke out after it was revealed that the late Sir Michael Parkinson, pictured left, that doesn't really help you, does it? Who interviewed him in 2001 is returning through an AI created podcast. So David said Only Falls was of its moment and just stayed like that, adding, oh, I hate the thought of my work being used this way. If the BBC made AI Del Boy, it come, I'd come back to haunt them. I'm pretty sure he doesn't really care. He's 85. He's 85 in February. Yeah, I'm sure 85 years old, he does not care about AI. Why, why would you? I can't believe he's 85 though. If you're going to go, so if he was going to say about national heroes or national treasures it used to be a bit of an overused word for a while or phrase for a while back in you know, a few years ago like everyone was a national treasure David Jason really is one of the most he's just I mean I don't know which generation would love him more but my generation Probably. Yeah, I'd say my generation. Maybe the generation before. People in their 50s and 60s, I would say, probably had the most love. Maybe 70s as well. Had the most love for David Jason. Because of, you know, he was in Porridge. He was in Open, open All Hours. And, por and then um, Only Fools and Horses. And then he was in Frost as well as a detective. And I never used to watch that, but he. They used to have a thing at Christmas where, like, the TV show was on, and then they'd have a, they'd have a Christmas special. And the Christmas special was so popular that they started having a Christmas special quite regularly, even though the show had kind of finished. I'm not sure how many they did. Probably not as many as I remember. But it became a kind of a, a Christmas thing. It's 85. Don't you look good for 85? I think most people look good at 85, though, don't they? It's like, they're 85. No one ever says, oh, God, it looks terrible for 85, don't he? No one ever says that, do they? I mean, I'm guessing. I've not spoken to everyone. Only his daughter is 93. 
Blimey. What does this say? The bond between Del Boy and Rodney in Only Fools and Horses was more than just a script. Sir David says, off-screen brother Nicholas Lindhurst, who's now in Fraser, in case you wonder who Nicholas Lindhurst is, if you're listening in another country, you may watch Frasier, the new the new season, new series. He's a professor. He's kind of like the he's got best friends with uh, Frasier now. We had a wonderful working relationship and became quite close friends. We did things like pretending to have a row, shaking the caravan, so the crew knew we had a laugh. He was also there for Nicholas when son. Okay. Cool. Okay. I won't, I won't read anything that's. Oh, look, cake. Helping feed your Christmas spirit. Tesco. Oh, that looks nice. War. Rotten lyrics and Beatles pick sells for 132000 Lyrics handwritten by Sex Pistols star Johnny Rotten and a signed Beatles photo each made over £65,000 at an auction. Okay. Um, A lucky black cat was saved by firefighters after she got stuck in a pipe. Okay, that's that's pretty much the story. So we've been having a... uh, This naming of storms, I don't think is a very good idea. Just generally. I don't personally think it's a particularly good idea. And it's a it's it's not a, an English thing to do, but we've copied other places, and it's a relatively new concept in this country. So the current storm is for some reason, and it's been devastating for a lot of people around the country, like really devastating. Yet they decided to give it a stupid name. Before it started, before it got here. Storm Bert. I mean, I personally... I wouldn't want something with such a stupid name associated with... Associated, yeah, associated. With something that's really... Just... It's a, it's a happy name, isn't it, Bert? It's, it's, it's not... It's not like a... I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of a funny name. The skinniest ever spaghetti, 200 times thinner than a human hair, has been made by scientists. You cannot see the pasta made with flour and formic acid. And it is hoped it will help patients. Creators of the nanofibers at University College London said they could act as handbags to aid wound healing. Oh, oh, bandages to aid wound healing. But Professor Gareth Williams said, I don't think it's useful as pasta, as it would overcook in less than a second. I think you need to be a little bit careful about anything that you buy that you can't see. Like, yeah, you see this? This is 200 times thinner than a human hair. So you can't see it with your eyes. So how much do you want to buy? Huh? Well, considering it's 200 times thinner than a human hair, and you can't see it, you're going to need, uh, you're going to need a few billion of them. Well, can I see the product first? You're looking at it. You're looking at it now. I can't see anything. Of course you can't. It's 200 times thinner than a human air. Air? Hair. Don't trust anyone. Don't don't buy something that's invisible. I mean, it looks like I'm being 
facetious, I guess, because that's an amazing stuff. Nanotechnology and stuff. Wow. Uh, oh, TV gladiators. Oh, that's again strictly. It's strictly on at the same time. Jason Beatty. Well fed kids do better. Right, okay. So eighty four percent of parents surveyed said universal free school meals had helped or significantly improved their household finances. Most said that their children were enjoying school more. Okay. So basically the story is children that eat food will do better at school compared to children that are hungry. It's, yeah, it seems quite an obvious thing. Um, am I wrong? It's clearly... I mean, when I was at school, I think school meals did cost money, so it wasn't it wasn't free. It was minimal, but, you know, it it works out quite a lot because I, I had three brothers, so I guess it would have been quite expensive. Even if it was like a pound a day, there's still... Well, my little brother was little. But, so there's three of us. Three pound a day. Three, six, nine, twelve. So that's, that's like... It's less than 200 pound a week, isn't it? That'd be... This is in the early 80s, so that's, that's quite a... You know... That's why we had sandwiches. In retrospect, I think I would have, once I was working, because I was, I'd had part-time jobs, I'd have spent some money on food, because I needed to put weight on, and I never did. I think if I'd spent money on food, to try and you know put a bit of get a bit of weight going, that might have been useful. What is this? Where's Betty gone? Where's my daddy gone? Where's my daddy gone? Right. Okay. So let's have a look. My ex Scott. Right, what is this? This is Cory Star Helen on choosing peace and joy for Christmas. It was quite weird. So Cory Star Helen McFadden or Flanagan or whatever her name is, Flanagan. It's re this is really strange, right? Okay. She was in Coronation Street from the being a kid, like a little kid. Coronation Street's I would probably say is the most popular soap opera in the UK. I'm guessing. So so she leaves East, uh, Coronation Street for a while when she's, I don't know, 18, 19, 18. And she decides to start mm. having photographs taken of her. And stripping off and all kinds of stuff like that and the newspapers were loving it she went into the jungle and the you know get me out of here thing and the newspapers were eating it up it just seemed weird considering myself included we all knew her as being this little girl It was just weird. Just it was like, why are they? It's, it's like she's. Why? I couldn't even me. Even I thought it was a bit strange, and I generally don't care about stuff like that. But it just it seems a strange thing to do. 
That's a weird one. There's a picture of her. How many kids has she got? No way. She's there with one, two, three, four, five. Five kids. She hasn't had five kids, has she? Helen, 34, has Matilda, Delilah, three-year-old Charlie, and footballers with one, two, three. Okay, so he's got two daughters himself. So she's had three kids. I didn't know she'd had any. Blimey. I think she went back into Coronation Street after stripping for a while. Not stripping, but like getting, like doing stuff and, you know, that kind of stuff. Which she became very famous for, for a, you know, for a couple of years. And then she just went back into Coronation Street like nothing ever happened. So she left, made her money, and then went back and continued making money. So those soaps, they're, they're pretty good for looking after their youngsters as far as there's a few actors, even with EastEnders as well, maybe maybe Emmerdale, where they start off as kids and they're still in there 30 years later. The most famous, well, the two most famous ones would be Ian from EastEnders and Steve from uh, Coronation Street. I mean, they've literally been in the show since they were kids in the 80s. And they're still young, you know, still really kind of, they, it's got Steve, oh, Steve's so funny. I don't even watch Carnation Street, but he's just, some of his plots, some of his, his, um, not all of them obviously, there's been some pretty horrible ones, but he's just kind of funny, quite a funny character. Right, where are we going? You can earn more working for eye care than in social care. Labour wants to fix that. Labour's fair pay agreement can deliver complex care packages in people's homes for much less money than keeping them in hospital. You know what? I remember my step nan. My step nan. They were trying to get her out of the hospital. They were like doing any, everything they could to release her. And my dad and her, her daughter, which is my stepmom, was saying, she's not ready to leave. She can't walk. She can't, you know. And she was in there because of a fall. And she also had a lot of other stuff as well. She's not, she's not around anymore. But it was very strange because she clearly wasn't ready to leave but they were desperate to get that bed empty and they did everything to get her out and they couldn't get her into the into the car so she had to go she had to go back and wait and go through the whole process again to get her a bed it was ridiculous like how can you, she can't walk, literally, she can't stand up. Yes, yeah, not good. The tip of climate change. Chaos reigns as COP21 as nations walk out over finance. Da, 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 da. See, that's the weird thing, because isn't that all about keep it like the what's it in it <laughs> I forget the name of it climate change and stuff so COP24 the problem is 
developing nations now are the ones that are creating the a lot of the like they're using coal and they're, do, they're doing stuff that we did I don't know a hundred years ago maybe and or 50 years ago and now they're doing it so we've you know in the western world we've tried to cut cut down but how can you tell someone you can't use coal you can't be mining you can't be doing this stuff when it's their country and it's their way of taking control of their own destiny and is you know especially when we've already done it it's just we don't do it anymore we don't really have coal mines anymore we don't you know we just it's like an outdated way of doing things mind you when it all runs out we might have to go back to coal <gasps> oh no sky sweet pea I don't know what that is. Sky. The tip of a climate change. So yeah. Alan's hee haw. Alan Carr will have to. Will have to. Callan, Callan Carr will have had to censor himself. Before taking to the stage at the Royal Variety Performance on Friday. As some of his jokes can be a little bit blue. Oh dear. Can't even read the rest of that. Renny Zellweger admits that she was left. Um, what? Oh, she was upset cause, because of Colin Firth. I didn't know Colin Firth had. Really? Oh. The actress is reprising her husband. Oh, she's heartbroken by the death of her fictional husband. No, in the book, who was played by Colin Firth, he was Mark Darcy. Apparently, in the next book, he's he was, you know, he's not in it anymore. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Is she still playing the character? I do suppose, really. I mean, it's the same character. It can, technically, if the author of the books is still writing the books, she could. I mean, she's that character. I mean,. I don't think anyone else I know Hollywood don't sometimes don't care who they cast well, they, you know they cast someone completely different I think no one would notice but I think Rene Zellweger she could play that character for the next well till she's in her 80s or 90s couldn't she blimey Danny's indoor house over Deb's. Danny Dyer says his beloved bulldog Debbie is treated like an illegitimate hairy child I brought into the family. Deb's just full of errors. He says wife doesn't like her. And has tried to ban her from the sofa. I um <sighs> I don't know. I've I I tried to be interested in that but it just didn't happen. Doers Doers masked singer. There's only one way Dua Lipa can travel around Japan incognito and that's wearing a giant devil's head. You're going to be noticed though, aren't you?
wouldn't you be noticed? Well, isn't that more noticeable wearing a big prosthetic head? Ten times bigger than your own head. Wouldn't that be more noticeable than just walking around and maybe wearing a wig or having different makeup? Or maybe wearing a face mask, you know? Which is kind of acceptable these days now. I always found that funny. Not funny, ha ha, but you know, kind of mildly amusing. You know, just before 2020, you know, we all know what happened then. Before 2020, the old uh, mask wearing episode, in the press, it was a huge amount of attention focusing on banning people from wearing masks and face coverings in public I think uh, France banned it I think uh, different countries were looking to ban it so people cannot walk around or sit in public having their face covered and then two months later we were all forced to have walk around with our faces covered I found that quite quite funny. Just how it was like, well, a few weeks ago, this was like the worst possible thing anyone could ever do. And now, the worst thing you could ever do is not do that. And if you coughed anywhere near someone, that was that was attempted manslaughter. Uh. So, oh, look at this. There's a lot of Black Friday stuff going on. So, 296.99 for a chair. That's good. Why I blame, okay, town heads number. Town councillors are unable to make decisions after refusing to swear allegiance to King Charles. The protest in Dawson City, Canada, was in support of a First Nation members concerned about the Crown's history with Indigenous people. It means a newly elected council cannot do anything by law. They have asked officials if they can take an alternative oath. We wanted to show solidarity. There's no disrespect for Charles. That does sound a bit silly though, doesn't it? There's somebody in another country, a council, a political party, council, whatever, in another country is supposed to, has to do some kind of ritual, ceremonial stuff like that towards somebody of another country. It does seem, especially as, I mean, in court, I don't know. I've never, I've never, I've never been into a like a, a big court court. I've been in court a couple of times, but not into a big one. And I was surprised, you know, when they say, "Oh, do you you swear on the Bible?" Do they ask them what religion they are? Because I think for years everyone just assumed, yeah, do it on the Bible, even though there's millions of people that have different religions. Oh, I don't know. Unique Kelly Holmes, a memoir. She's unique. So she's called herself unique. Yeah, what does she do? Winning for her country was easier winning for her country was easier than winning against herself and finally learning to love who she is that's Marlene Class says that um, I'm not really sure who she is she's a sports person Kelly Holmes unique a memoir oh okay I've got no idea she, I know she's a 
does she a runner or something? Well, she's if she's an English sports person, an Olympic winner, then there's only a few events that we really do well at, like every time, swimming, bike riding, and rowing. They're the three things that we excel at, like every single time. Especially the the rowing and the bike riding. We like cycling. We are like super good at that. I say we, including I'm including myself in that. Last time I went rid a bike, I actually fell off it. It's a few years ago. I was actually talking about a royal family with my neighbour and we were just both kind of agreed the same thing it's like just, uh, but not in a bad way it just doesn't feel right calling someone else queen the queen and it's not because there's a lot of like anti whatever her name is whatever the queen's name is uh, the the new one uh, Prince King Charles's wife there's a lot of fun anti against her because of just I don't think the public really like her generally I've got no issue I don't don't know her so I don't really care but I can I can recognise because I've grown up with the Queen she's been there she was a Queen all through my life from birth all the way through not her birth my birth and I've known since a, a kid that one day Prince Charles would be King Charles. It's always been, that's the standard. And then when William was born, he would be King Charles if Prince Charles passed away before the Queen did. And he's, you know, he was third in line. Now he's first in line. So that's just standard stuff. And then when the Queen passed away and the King became the King, Prince Charles became King Charles, they were talking about, what's the name, being Queen Consort or Consort Queen or whatever. But no one called her the Queen, his his wife. And now they call her the Queen. I can't... Again, it's not like based on negativity. I just, it's almost, I don't know, like losing, losing someone. It's like, I don't know, like parents divorcing and then calling the other person mum or dad. As an adult, I mean. So if, you know, let's say if my mum was my mum and dad was still married and then they split up bearing in mind he's nearly 80 and I'm in my middle 30s and now and he met someone else I'm not going to call him mum am I or she met someone else I'm not say dada hello dada call me Phil no, dada, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know, I might, I might do it just to annoy him, but generally, probably not going to. Mummykins, mummykins, can I, can I please pass the gravy, mummykins? And my dad, like, taking me to a side, this is the first time you've met her, can you please just, you know, tone it down a bit? I mean, we've only been seeing each other for two weeks. But she's my new mummy. Is she going to be my new mum? <laughs> will, will she love me the same as my other mummy? Will she, will she always be there? Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Cook up some... Oh. 
Right, so I think I've kind of got through that one. That's that newspaper. Retail therapy. Don't feel... Black Friday. I'm sure there's more than one Black Friday. Why is it called Black Friday anyway? I don't understand. There must, I'm sure there's got to be a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. How to pick a family cat. Okay, this is the, this is a little thing. Here's a question. Who's this for? Pets with David Grant. What if he's related to, uh, the other Grant? We are looking for an affectionate, this is a question. We are looking for an affectionate family cat. Happy around children and sitting on our laps in the evening. Do we get a moggy or a pedigree? A kitten or an adult? Please advise as we are not sure where to start. Uh, the answer is this. As an RSPCA vet for many years, I admit to being biased. My recommendation for a family cat is a moggy rather than a pedigree. The next decision is between a kitten and an adult. Kittens are only really young for six months before growing into adulthood. And then living for 14 years or more, the distinction isn't a huge one. When looking for a kitten, check that it is affectionate and curious and doesn't object to being gently picked up. It should have been socialised with people before weaning at eight weeks. Um, right, he's telling stuff that they're not even asking. Okay, the next question. I have two rabbits. They're both female and they're both four months old because they were like twins. Very similar. They get along very well, but I, I have been advised neutering is essential to reduce the risk of fighting. Fighting, not fighting. Also, I've heard some alarming statistics, blah, blah. So, um, the next the answer is, I recommend rabbit neutering to minimise the risk of fighting. Generally, a neutered male and female get along best, but two female litter mates are fine having been neutered. Failure to do so will result in fighting and a fallout in most cases. That was more boring than I imagined. But look at this. Breathe easy with the Homcom. The Homcom humidifiers offers a compact, efficient solution for managing indoor humidity in spaces between 20 and 25 metres. With a capacity to remove up to 20 litres of moisture daily, it helps prevent mould and mildew while enhancing air quality. Blah, 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 blah. Me, 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 me. <sighs> Let's look at the sports section. Any boxing? Any, any, any for any? Nope. Nope, boxing, nothing. Nout. I don't know how they managed to fill the papers with the stuff they do it's like football 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 so this this country loves the football Bruno Bruno right yeah that's it no boxing the only sport I like it's weird isn't it the only sport I like is boxing Right, that's it, nout. Many, many pages of, of football. Oh, look at this. It's a big advert from Disney. A magical display of light and movement. Over the years, the beloved Disney characters have given us countless gifts, unforgettable moments of love, laughter, and sheer joy. 
Now the magic of Disney delivers all of the cheer all over the festive period season. Every, oh, it's just things you can buy and paint. I suppose that would be a quick way of saying it instead of a whole advert page of adverts. Da, 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 da. I sent before the X Factor before the E uh, okay. Just looking. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just reading this and I'm thinking it's the same adverts. I might just go in like I think I might just be going in a circle. It's not the first time. A short story by Alex Pine. No. Northern Delights. Oh, it's because it's a Sunday. All the papers are all oh, cookies. Bedtime biscuits. Oh, they look yummy. Yum, 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 yum. And that's normal, eh? TV Guide. What's this? Comedy. Smoggy Queens. This comedy centres around a gang of friends who are fiercely proud of their Middlesbrough town and their small pocket of the LGBTQ plus community. The cast includes ex cory actress Alexandra Mardell, who plays Emma Brooker, Waterloo Road's Mark Benton, Phil Dunning, Michael Visage and Stephen McGovern. Why are they proud of being Fiercely proud of Middlesbrough. Never understood why people are proud of where they live. I mean, if you built it, then yeah, like I feel proud because I built this town. I built this city. I built this city with rock and roll. And I'm proud. Oh, I'm sorry, proud. Oh, proud to be like you were bought. You haven't done anything to be proud about. If you if you do something, yeah. If you created something, deep impact. Okay, there's some door ass this afternoon. It was yesterday, really. Oh, this is afternoon's TV. Oh, Taylor Swift celebrating a monumental year. I don't think I know one song by Taylor Swift. And it hasn't affected her career one bit, has it? <laughs> when she's at home crying, I wish Jason would listen to me. Wow. I just... Uh... trying to think oh what about my t oh yep Russell Grant here we go this is the um, my stars so I'm a Virgo yes yes I am talking to an older relative or neighbor will give you a new perspective on a financial or legal issue. Their wisdom will help you find a way through a situation that has been troubling you. Okay. That is a kind of fitting, to be honest, which is something I don't like to admit. 
So that was a Sunday pickle, that's done. Oh, Sunday pickle. So where we go, Sunday pickle. Let's go to the Sunday mirror. What? Sunday mirror. Read. Okay. But it's the same kind of stuff. Top court faces promo, okay. Uh, four point. It's almost like it's the same newspaper. In fact, it's the same pictures. David Jason. It is the same. It's exactly the same newspaper that I just wrote, read. What am I doing? That was the Sunday Mirror. Didn't I read the Sunday People? Sunday People. You're joking me. Don't tell me. What? I was going to the beginning. Because I've just seen exactly the same articles in both newspapers. That can't be true. Unless I've somehow managed to go to a different newspaper. And I've just read all the newspapers all in one time. That doesn't make sense though. The Sunday people. Yeah, Sunday people. Sunday people. It's going to take me a while. Blimey. I have to be careful. I'm trying to not make my desk squeak. It's a bit loose. It's a bit squeaky these days. I need to. I think it needs a good. I need to sort of do some screwing. I need to get the screw tightened. The Sunday People. So that's what I've just read. The Sunday People. Okay. The Sunday People. Let's come out of that. The Sunday people. So that's the Sunday people, the Sunday mirror. Different newspaper. Same article. Exactly the same picture as in the people. Exactly the same pictures. Exactly the same. This is the same. How can it be the same? The people in the sun. Is it the same? It's exactly the same newspaper. That doesn't make sense. How? How? I mean, literally identical pictures. But just not quite in the same. Is the people in the mirror the same newspaper? That's really strange. So I'm going back to the mirror again. It's it's the same pictures but in a different order. The same articles but just in a different order. That's really, really weird. Wow. So I'm now looking at the mirror, Sunday mirror. Same stuff, same, even the same advert. Same pictures. Blimey. Same. It's the same. It's, the, it's exactly the same. A few different adverts. Pretty much the same. Some of the bits are different. Alan Carr will have to censor himself. Before going on to... Like, it's the same stuff. I don't get it. How is that? That is very, very weird. But so many adverts are different. There's a Hugh Jackman one in this one. And the Russell Grant... It's a diff it's a different design, but it's is his uh you know, the star sign thing. So it's a different newspaper, but all the articles are practically identical. So let's see. 
for this one the same day different newspaper same person doing the, um, the star signs for Virgo a choice about your employment or health will soon be reached having an open discussion can shed light on your available options and possibilities with all the details in front of you you'll be able to make a thoughtful decision rely on your friends to take care of social arrangements so this is very strange the amount of articles that were identical I mean word for word identical it's exactly the same images there's so many adverts are exactly the same but these are two different newspapers the people and the mirror Sunday mirror and the Sunday people that is that is very very unusual wow ok I've come to the end so with this one it's not as much sport as the other one so the mirror's done what I'll do is I look at the Sunday the daily star ok let's read this one it says daily star the geeks shall inherit the earth this is the headlines geeky hobbies geeky hobbies like gaming and fantasy role playing are more popular with British youngsters than footy looks like the nerds finally have their revenge I mean technically they class nerds as people that like computers and stuff like that the world is being run by what they would call nerds people like Elon Musk and all the the multi-billionaires who are high-tech IT internet people so it's been going on for a long time I never call them geeks or nerds because I'm kind of outside of the being a billionaire I'm a little bit like that I quite, you know, I quite like the uh, internet stuff sure share or sure said I saw Jesus in my curtains now I've got I can't wait to get to that news article right Letis turned into David Iker football okay Ricky Weezer so Ricky Gervais says that his best acting lesson came when he failed to get a football team get into a football team while still at junior school he went to tr for tryouts with kids at his local park but tried to show his commitment by racing past the coach acting like he was out of breath and instead of signing him up the team boss told the comic to get treatment for asthma Ricky ok I don't really know what that's about yet Stellan his weird moves might have got him out Jeff Stellan has compared his telly pal Matt DeLitiche with conspiracy theorist David Icke uh, ok handwritten Beatles ok we've okay, all done that one so they talk about Bert booze first for blokes men are refusing to cut back on her ok right here to stay for what we help you see funny side of Black Friday I mean how can Black Friday be on a Sunday and a Saturday and a Tuesday and a Monday and a Thursday and a Wednesday it's literally called Black Friday sure it can only be on a Friday can't it uh, went to the corner shop bought four corners this is Tommy Cooper I went to buy a watch and the man in the shop said analogue I said no it's just a watch just a watch to time I had to invite 
next one is Jimmy Carr I'd like to go into the body shop and shout I've already got one uh, Pesse Graham Messe Graham says these are jokes there I tried to steal spaghetti from the shop but the female god saw me and I couldn't get past her oh uh, next is Victoria Wood I'm going north it's a compulsion with me even in Tesco's I head straight for the freezer cabinet on the back wall okay uh, it might just be too early for me but I'm not I didn't even get that one um, Tim Vine I went into a shop and I said can someone sell me a kettle the bloke said Kenwood I said where is he <laughs> oh dear um, Frank Carson <laughs> says a guy goes into B&Q and says I'd like some nails please how long would you like them I want to keep them <laughs> just bang the microphone I think this is Les Dawson I just can't manage with the cost of living I don't know about you but next year it's going to cost us a fortune to put cotton wool on the Christmas tree Okay, um, heard about the dyslexic pervert went into SM, S&M shop and bought a nice cardigan. That's John Cooper Clark. Paul left Tyler. Money can't buy happiness. I bought a Happy Meal. Cool. Um, Frank Carson again. A fellow walks into a pet shop and says... Give me a wasp. The shopkeeper replies, We don't sell wasps. He says, There's one in the window. Yeah, Tommy Cooper, I went to buy some camouflage trousers the other day, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> couldn't find any. Oh dear. Um, Ken Dodd. I went into a shop last Saturday to buy a lottery ticket. There was a gorgeous girl behind the counter. She said, next week I'll be rollover, it'll be rollover week. And I said, will it? That's better than winning 10 quid. Um, Tim Vine says, I went into a pet shop. I said, can I buy a goldfish? The guy said, do you want an aquarium? I said, I don't care what star sign it is. <laughs> uh, Tim Vine, I went to a music, sh I went to a music shop, and a man was putting blankets over all electric guitars, with lower resonance. I said, What are you doing? He said, Covering all bases. So. Um, that, that's going to help with Black Friday. There's, uh, there's some jokes there. Maybe I, should, I, should, I might, I might start getting some joke books. Just collecting joke books and reading some jokes out, like old ones, you know, from like really old. Bunnies beaten. Felicity Kendall has packed up growing veg because of hungry bunnies and slugs. The seventy-eight-year-old, blimey. She was one of my little, um, I don't know what you would call it, crushes when I was younger. It was, she was in It's The Good Life in the 70s. And I watched it in the 80s and the 90s. I just always fancied her. It's just something about her. So lovely. Yeah, she's 24, 24 years old, isn't she? Adele cannot wait. Adele has already planned her career break. We're still a week to go before she finishes a high-profile Las Vegas residency. The Londoner is plotting to go hard at the gym after taking it easier because of concerns over her efforts impacting her voice. Adele has vow, found, vowed to pump iron and return as a muscle Mary as tough workouts are her favourite. 
All right, apparently it strains the neck, so it will be it causes strain on the on the vocal cords. Oh, apparently, look, there's going to Peaky Blinders mover movie, Peaky Blinders movie. Wow, that'd be cool. That'll be a, that'll be a hit. Especially considering uh, Killian Murphy, Cillian Murphy, Killian or Cillian is I mean, he's Oscar winning now, isn't he? He's big old star. And also very pretty. I don't get that. Why? I'd be focusing on... Uh, just looking at the, the jungle thing. Classic giggles on tours. The cast of the Far Show going back on tour following the 30th anniversary live shows earlier this year. Ooh, what is this? Sex and the City actress Sarah Jessica Parker, film producer Tiziana Rocco, and Hollywood star Sharon Stone enjoy a dinner in Italy. Wow. Weird, it's like think of Sharon Stone. She was so famous in the eighties, wasn't she? Like so famous. Like basic instincts and I'm not sure what else, but definitely basic instincts. That was just huge. I mean no one else in the whole world has ever been famous for crossing their legs before it is I think that she's the first person that ever became globally famous for that I mean he's a great actor as well but just you know just crossing your legs blimey that'd be nice wouldn't it Okay, pity. So, so look. So, there's been um, we lost a, a John Prescott passed away, and he was a politician. But he was he's famous for something that happened in the nineties. He was walking through a crowd, you know, sort of coming out of a. I don't know if it's a House of Parliament or some some kind of political event, and I think someone chucked an egg at him or chucked something at him from the crowd, and he punched. He punched them, punched the person on the chin, and he didn't get sacked or anything. Like nowadays, they probably they they wouldn't get away with it, but he. It was a huge, huge deal in the press and that, but it was such a peach of a punch. Peach of a punch it was. A punch, a peachy punch. Picky, pr oh, okay. Terror on the streets. It's ghosts, uh, what? I'm just looking, I want to find stuff that's readable. Okay, and they're talking about Helen, Helen Skelton. Here and Wow Steps movie. Steps are planning to make a comeback. They're starting to make a movie version of the new musical. A mu movie version of the new musical. Here and Now enjoy some of the rare reviews. Claire Rich has told me a film version of the show is something we strive towards. Um... Okay, just having a look. 
H. Does he still call himself H? Claire said, this shows 100% lends itself to be in a film. It would be a great British movie. Their band, Lisa Scott Lee, added, to see the show become a film would be incredible. Incredible. Claire Richards, oh, he's not talking about H. I used to really like Claire. Really, really, really good voice. Like, really good voice. She, I mean, I don't mean it horribly towards the rest of the band, but she, she carried that band with her voice. Such an amazing voice. And, uh, right, same advert of chocolate cake from Tesco. What's this? Black Pink girl band star Rose wants to be number one in more ways than one. Fresh from her Bruno Mars collab APT, or APT, which stalled at number two, the K pop princess has dropped old school ballad number one girl. Rose, who has promised to rejoin her group next year, said, This is this is for every girl and boy who dreams to be somebody's number one. Oh. So that's good. That's nice. And ooh. I'm just having a look. Linkin Park feel vindicated for getting a new vocalist after landing a number one with new album from Zero. From Zero. Fol- you know what? I mean, the old, the, the original singer passed away. They've returned with a new singer. What's wrong with that? I mean, Linkin Park, they were a big band. And... Queen did it, didn't they? They they did it with uh, I don't know what his name was. New singer, new lead singer of the band. Not for a long time, but they did do it. And there was, what was that other that band where the lead singer disappeared, so they they made him new singer. Then what's his name? Do you remember um, Genesis when Peter Gabriel left? Joe Collin, no. Um, what's his name? Took over, didn't he, as the lead singer? I mean, he went. He he didn't even go from guitarist to singer. He went from drums to singer. That's like Ringo Starr replacing Paul McCartney. I mean, that's what. But he did quite well, didn't he, Uncle Phil? Uh, Apparently, Elvis Costello says he can't afford to retire and could end up in Pento. Oliver's army is here to stay. Oliver's army is underway. And I will never be anywhere else than here today. Such a good song. I get, oh, what is this? I get 30 bonkers TV offers a week. Really? It's not letting me read this for some reason. I don't know why. They've formatted it wrongly. They've formatted it in a way that is not allowing me to read it. It's crossed over two pages. Bill Bailey keeps getting asked to do daft telly shows. I get offered more weird shows all the time. One of them was going to be called Celebrity (laughs) Celebrity Embalmer. Wow. Okay. Can't really complain though, can he? If you're getting offered jobs constantly, it's got to be a good thing. Oh, 
the zombie is here to stay. All of it and me and me. Let's see if my star sign's in here. Because there won't be anything about boxing, of course. Because, you know, unfortunately, boxing doesn't seem to be quite as interesting to everyone else as it is to me. It's the only sport. The only sport. Right, let's have a look. Let's see if there's a star signs in this newspaper. Is there? Is there? Is there? Oh, no. I thought there was. There's quite a few word searches. The thing is, if I do a word search, you can't really... I don't know. It's probably not quite as... Oh, look. I found the star signs. Oh, I got excited then. Right. This is with Russell Grant again. The same person that did the previous two. Here's my one. Talking to an older relative or neighbour will give you a new perspective on a financial or legal issue. The wisdom will help you find a way through a situation that you have found to be troubling. So that's that was exactly the same or pretty much the same as the very first one. The first uh, horoscope I saw. So that's the stars. I've done the mirror. No, I've done. I've done. People, mirror, star. Now let's do the Daily Mail. Let's look at the Daily Mail. Star Helen, my jungle pants. So this is the Daily, the Sunday Mail. It could be ex Cory Star Helen. Oh, right, she's not in... Is Helen Flanagan not in Coronation Street anymore? Oh. She tips pal to Lisa, to Lula, to be Queen of the Jungle. That's nice. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. oh, what? <laughs> um... So I'm just looking through here. They're not. It's not the most. Okay, some of the same pictures as in the other newspapers. Same pickies. You'd think that they'd be able to just choose different pictures. Why use the same pictures? That's my question. Eva. Free fish and the seal of improvement. Okay, here we go. A rescue rescue seal pups have been tucking into fish supper after a seafood firm donated 1.5 tons of mackerel to the sanctuary. Caithness seal rehab and release, which rescues and rehabilitates seals before releasing them back to the wild, received a donation from Den Home Seafoods in Peterhead. The charity, based at Bro or B R O U G H, is the only seal sanctuary in Caithness, and spent thirteen thousand pound on fish alone for their seals last year. And the person who works there said, this saves us a huge cost. Okay. Uh, 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 jazz lands. Jazz great Jamie Cullum says the Scott scene has the best vibes and is producing some top-notch artists. The 45-year-old singer who shot to fame on Parkinson in 2003 said, the Scottish jazz scene is alive and well. There are so many amazing musicians coming out of Scotland. One of my favourites who I have been championing on my BBC Radio 2 show is Fergus McReady, the jazz pianist, pianist, pianist 
and composer who was born in Jamestown, Easter Ross, and is based in East Easter Ross and is based in Glasgow. Scott Liam Shorts and Freddie McCready. Okay, cool. I I don't, uh, I don't know about jazz. I I understand a little bit about it being creative and be you know sort of not being set in stone and I don't know kind of ad libbing and all that 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 sounds like something that would be pretty cool to be able to do but I can't even play an instrument anymore so I wouldn't know I used to be a, I used to be able to play the violin very basically when I was about 10 yeah had regular violin lessons for a fair fair while maybe a, I don't know year year and a half maybe two years I don't know I was adequate I wasn't awful. I wasn't. I don't know. It's. I mean. It's really weird. I can remember. Bearing in mind. I was in junior school. And I was nine and ten. But I can still remember. Having the guitar. Not the guitar. <laughs> the trumpet. No, having the violin taking it out of the case having the sponge on the corner of it for my shoulder not underneath my always is it underneath my shoulder you know, for, you know sort of to protect my neck and my shoulder or whatever and the smell of it and rubbing this the cleaning the the bow with so it was like hair uh, horse hairs I think and cleaning it with this wax thing was it wax something like that and retuning the violin and making sure it was all correct and just practicing like that sometimes I'd actually even play the instrument dusting it that was good the best thing was annoying everyone else in the house oh. once I realised I was doing that I was practising all the time Right, stars with this one. All the other newspapers have had the same person. This one's got Lynn Ewart. A wart. I'm not sure if I'd change my name if it was a wart. Our brilliant astrologer takes a look at what the next week holds for you. Here we go. It says, stop making fun of my name. <laughs> no. Look out for the return of folk who have been absent a while and for opportunities to pick up the threat of previous shelved or postponed plans, one of which may involve a special gathering. I never use the word folk, so she clearly doesn't know me, so it's not aimed at me. Look out for the return of folk. I've never used that word. We don't use it in, don't use it in the south, really, southeast. Folk. I understand. It's like, there's no word for people, isn't it? A person. But yeah, don't use it here. Yeah. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like. Bam time again. Bam time? What's that? Gary Spencer. This is a music thing. Okay. Christmas time. 
old unis on it. It's just what the doctors ordered. Um, I know it's we haven't had any snow here. It's not even cold anymore. It was really, really cold about, I'd say Thursday and Friday. Like really. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Like proper, proper, ear-bitingly cold. And over the weekend it's become really mild. Like proper mild, not even, very, very windy. Not mild, I mean... You know, temperature-wise, mild, extremely windy. Though it's, I can't hear the wind today, but for two days in a row, it's been like proper full-on. But now, it's, it was raining outside. Look, BBC's Michel, ready to quit Radio 4 show. Michel Hussein is reportedly preparing to step down from the Radio 4 today. After 11 years, according to reports, talks are underway with BBC bosses about finding a new role for the journalist who joined the show in 2013. After 11 years, Michelle has reached the point where the 3.30am alarm call is no longer a welcome noise. She is very highly thought of. But she's she reads the news. She's one of my favourite news readers. I fancy her. Sorry. I do. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. Yes, I really do. I love her so much. The brand balls are coming, so snap right back to it. Oh, okay. I can't see anything else worth reading. You know, I quite like to go to a... What do they call it? The thing, the Christmas nativity thing, you know, when... Oh, I forget it. I forget what it's called. Where they have like singing and dancing and well I quite even like I'd quite enjoy perhaps going to a a Christmas carol concert. I don't know why, I just haven't been to one for a long time. A long time. Right. Let's end with the Wales on Sunday. So I've gone through nearly all the other papers. Let's have a little look at this. Battered by Box and Bert. Okay, I don't know what that is. Becoming a crucial okay. Parents left with choice of buying presents for a color colorized Doctor Who episode set to be aired. Oh, is it colorizing some of the old episodes of Doctor Who that were in black and white? Oh. Girls, Santa's going second hand this Christmas. The cost of living, okay. So this is a a, a reporter saying that she's going to be buying second hand gifts. I thought reporters earn quite good money. The thing is, the gifts she's got in her, they look like they're from the 70s. Like tumbling monkeys, pie face. The boxes. Wow. I wouldn't have been happy with that when I was a kid. <laughs> Second hand. Don't you mean pre-loved? No, second hand. The thing is, I don't know what it's like now, but when I was a kid, I 
could not stand second hand stuff because that's what I got hand me downs, trousers, tops, jumpers. So I had two older brothers. So my oldest brother, he'd hand down. So it's like I was the third one to, to wear the crap, you know. So my oldest brother, then my second oldest brother, and then me. And by the time I got them, they'd be just didn't like it. The underwear was the worst one. So look, they'll pull a spell on you. This musical adaption of the backstory of the Wizard of Oz, which is as truly magical, wicked. I want to watch that. I wanted to watch that. I wanted to actually see that in concert. But they're doing a movie of it. So I'll be looking forward to that. It comes out. Oh, it's already out in the cinema. No. Wicked part two. All right, so they've got Wicked. This is part one. Wicked Part 2 will be out in November next year. Wow. Cool for cats. Cool for cats. Yeah. It's just... Right, well, there's more stuff about that. Light and there's stars and then about bringing it... So it's weird. They've talked about it. They've gone three pages. And now they're talking about it again. And now Russell Grant has got his new. So this is on the well of the wells on Sunday. Russell Grant star sign. So I think this is the same as another one that we read. Virgo. So a choice about your employment or health will soon be reached. Having an open discussion can shed light on your available options and possibilities. With all the details in front of you, you'll be able to make a thoughtful decision. Rely on your friends to take care of social arrangements. Okay. And that, I do believe, is a wrap. That's all of the pretty much all of the Sunday papers completed I say completed I mean I've left out a lot of stuff that just is not particularly pleasant to be fair it's hard to find anything nice in the newspapers but I've tried to keep it as genteel as possible and it's still dark outside I wonder what the time is 7.21 7.22 still dark So that's it. Thank you for listening. We've got hiccups now. Mm. So thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. relax in a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. 
so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time, perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was person's voice relaxed me, just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, 
each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice it almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And 
that's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring and I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feel 
feels nice. To, if nothing else, just take in some time. Away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of. Peace, serenity, with a joyful heart. seems to just drip by so very slowly So deeply peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy. the physical sensations 
of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. being released from your brain and your mind Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are all 
Bewusstsein. Feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, 
sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body, tips of your toes to your eyes. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go.
so tranquil. Enjoy in a sense of letting go. Even more. Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
的整个。Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice Forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace, Go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling, positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth. Relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. Focus in. the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you are nowhere about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So Now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs, your knees, Muscles and your shins completely
So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
pain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep, and if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that, now, focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now. Ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you 
count it down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And 
as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. his head even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries, so all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet they also go whew, and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk about, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing, but it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music of course you're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people of course you might be but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own so no distractions And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical. This is just a natural process. Something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep. Depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy process of gradually relaxing each
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
Imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your There's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer you that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands No. 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Take 
that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if we've gone inside yourself and we've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect 
what they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try and don't even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go. Because
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. When you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect positive, only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
と、and that negativity would disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, all that healing. Is spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
15. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body, and you find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep. And that's the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one, where does your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles,
letting you go. go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just to first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good, it's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands and 
and this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders and the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides, and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really, really 
release the tension to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you feel really nice sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you that way it'll still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes even if it is with a stranger someone you don't know very well like a massage person or a therapist maybe because it's intimate You can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. 
massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. It feels so, so relaxing. So comforting. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again where there would be a B area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the you know the two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension opening up the body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move 
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side, to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massaging that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. Because it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move 
it down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine in your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but Firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel. You can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes 
of my fingers, each one individually. to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I'll spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving from down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged, feel really Turn over and unwind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. massaging around your scalp, massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently, the sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the 
collarbones, from the side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, and then moving down again, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now I'm 
insides your stomach, the front of your stomach, and in circles around your belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin Gently, softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot, Gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Joy, feeling so deeply relaxed, so much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. Just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down.
imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish. say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds forest the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and as the plane goes by the traffic and trains in the distance but none of that seems important Whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less important anything is. The more candles you blow out, the further you seem.
energy. So simple. What would be the start by introducing the first candle? Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
to um,
Namaste.
do.
his thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax. body just follows. It's all right, like a breath of relief. Oh, let us now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick the shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting now like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind feel prepared to let go of everything and to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate and your tensions and your 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you probably haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax it may seem almost alien but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. Is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not, may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice 
breathing out any excess desire or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And just start to focus on your mind, how you do not notice that things are come to a standstill and maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind does not really need me in listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know you are feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed. It really is benefits to your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your head glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus from the inside of your scalp where it grows you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain they're not even necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling
this ever increasing sensation of comfort with a spreading throughout your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in your body. 
this moment to then start off by focusing on the hands just be aware of the hands I'd like you to move your hands around just maybe move your fingers a little Just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as we've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, making your toes gentler. Very, very gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I'm just going to ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper limbs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. muscles and of course they lead to the side of your neck they also lead to the top of your back which lead to your shoulders and as you focus now on the back of your neck maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up Maybe moving your head down 
the size of the figure. Which is not so easy, but very much possible. Which is muscles and some moves and it's your repair and it's your some buttocks.
everything starts to slow down. including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movement of energy make up the larger movements, which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings all those different muscles and the skin the hairs of your arms the all the internal parts of your arms the veins Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. May not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing also not and when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit like you tense the muscles gently Noticing the difference in each shoulder. And your lower back. side of your lower back. Recall set connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back and as along Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. So much of the 
chest. You see there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, as a female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're a male, you've got the different, I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a male or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Feeling with whatever feeling there is chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time and it feels it feels okay bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. Like I don't feel really part of my upper back. between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas in the back Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body. To get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes. doing it there's a I don't know 
energy through the pale part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself. as your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. It's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording of relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slowly down. As your body. body. Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom. And you start maybe to Some weird point in it. It sends your mind <laughs> far away from the spaceship. So slow.
is something that I can do myself and I have my own. The time when I can maybe sit down and do this for a few minutes. Thank you. 